All right, everybody. Hey, how's it going? It's Melanie Knight here. I am here to tell you about some things I'm very passionate about. Very passionate about. Things that you might think are disgusting, but things that I'm like, I love that stuff. <laughs> this video today is all about the five most grossome animals that I can think of. All right, grossome. You're like, what is that? What does grossome mean? Okay, grossome is... A word that we came up with at the aquariums when I worked there and it was mostly for kids when they would like look at stuff that we were showing them and they'd be like oh gross and we'd be like mm, yeah it's gross but it's also awesome okay so it's grossome it's gross and awesome together so most things that are gross in the ocean are also super fascinating and so I want to tell you my top five animals that I think are the most grossome okay animal number one animal number one is the hagfish. Guys, have you ever looked up a hagfish? Okay, I won't dive in deeply into each of these animals because there's way too much cool stuff about them online. And so this is just a sampler, just a teaser to get you going and get you looking online. Okay, because they are grossome, seriously gross and seriously awesome. Okay, so the hagfish is like this primitive fish that kind of looks like a an eel. It doesn't have any fins in it, but this animal is best known for how much slime it produces. I'm talking buckets of slime in order to keep its predators away. So if you were to take a bite out of a hagfish like this particular uh, shark did, you would get a mouthful of slime, which pretty much would make you start to choke on your own spit and spit it out. Hagfish are able to make so much slime that they were, if you were to put them in a bucket of water, it would turn that bucket into slime in just a matter of seconds. Hagfish use their slime not just to deter their predators, but also to help them move more smoothly through their prey. And it's because hagfish will eat dead whales at the bottom of the ocean, but in order to get into their digestive system most quickly, they will go in through the buttholes of the whales. <laughs> So, <laughs> I just think this stuff is hilarious, and that's why I wanted to make a video about it. I don't know why. I'm just laughing to myself here about how funny that is. Anyway, I think it's really funny that hagfish eat eat uh, eat whales through their bum. <laughs> okay, animal number two is an animal that I'm very familiar with. This animal is very common here on the west coast of British Columbia. It is a sea cucumber, but sea cucumbers can be found in almost every ocean, I'm pretty sure. Sea cucumbers, what's cool about them, also bum related, okay? You can see I have a particular sense of humor. <laughs> I'm not much more mature than a 14 year old boy, but anyway, the, um, the sea cucumbers, they will, okay, so here's the story. I don't know if I should tell you again. All of this stuff is really gross. Are you sure you wanna know? <laughs> Okay, you're watching, so here we go. So the sea cucumbers are like a long kind of tube. They're a very simple animal. They have like two openings on either side and they're normally very spiky to keep predators away because they kind of look like they're sharp, even though they're not sharp. Okay, so the sea cucumber is pretty much like the vacuum of the ocean. It vacuums all the, it's cleaning up uh, as it cruises along the bottom of the sea floor. So when the sea cucumber is busy eating all the time through its mouth, and its mouth is very cool, it can't breathe through the same end. So it actually breathes through its posterior end. It breathes through its bum, <laughs> okay? And so sea cucumbers are bum breathers. And what's also cool about their posterior end is that if you were to uh, kind of manipulate or startle a sea cucumber, you could potentially frighten it. And when it is scared, it will do something called evisceration. And evisceration pretty much means that it throws up all of its insides as a way to be like, here, scary predator, eat this instead of eating me. So they will throw up their intestines, their re reproductive organs, sometimes even their gills. They will throw those up, leave them on, leave them there for the predator, and then they'll slime away, they'll like slowly try to wiggle away in an attempt to keep, to give the predator something to eat while it goes away and hides, and then it slowly regenerates its insides. Isn't that fascinating? So they not only are bum breathers, but they also eviscerate out their bums. <laughs> okay. okay, this stuff is hilarious. If you're not laughing, then I don't know. Okay, so it gets better, because now we're talking about number three, three, Animal number three is the lobster. Okay, lobsters are fascinating. Have you guys ever eaten a lobster? Of course. Okay, did you know that lobsters pee out of their face? Okay, so, so these lobsters, again, this is a fantastic question. And I recently got this question from my friend Lilibel, who is five. Lilibel, hi, how are you? 
Lilabelle asked, is it true that lobsters pee from their face? And I was like, ah, I definitely know that lobsters will use their urine to waft in front of the female or male lobsters in order to send a signal that they're ready for mating. But I did not actually know. I had to go back and look it up to see where their, where their kind of urine came out of. They have, at the bottom of the stalks, like they have all these antennas on their heads, at the stalks, at the base of those stalks uh, of their antenna, they have a little pore, a little gland, is, which is where their pee comes out. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> and so they pee from her face and then it allows them to send out pheromones. So ultimately like little signals that indicate that I'm ready for mating to the male. Uh, there's also science that shows that the pee actually calms the, the male down so that it's ready for mating. Because normally when they're in mating season, those males are ready to fight other males off. And so I, the science says that the pee actually calms them down. Who knew? Anyway, very strange. Grossum, right? Okay, animal number four is herring. Herring are a very popular schooling fish that live all over the region here. They come in large masses in the springtime and they lay their eggs all over the dock pilings and the kelp and the eelgrass and they are vital to a healthy ecosystem. But what's grossome about them is that they use a very special methodology in which to communicate with one another while they are gathering in the early evening or dusk time of the, of the night. What it's called is F. RT. It stands for fast repetitive ticks or fast repetitive tick sounds if you want to add the S to it. So these farts are literal farts that come out of the herring. The herring will go up to the surface of the water, gulp air, and then pass them through their anus in order to make these very quick that allow them to communicate at a very high frequency. Do we know what they're saying with these clicks? No, but what we do know is that they can hear them in this very specific type of frequency. And most herring actually have very good hearing because they're listening for each other's farts, okay? But it's not, it's the acronym fart. Okay, don't get your head in the gutter. Don't be gross, ew. Okay, so the final animal that I'm gonna highlight today is the output of a sperm whale. Now, sperm whales eat a lot of squid. They really like the squid. And squids are very soft and they're very delicious, but they have the beak at the center of their body, which is like where, which is their mouth part. It's like a beak, like a bird. And they can't, sperm whales can't digest those beaks. They're too hard. So they get stuck in their stomachs and they get turned into this kind of like slimy, um, greasy nodule. But because these animals are massive and they eat so many squid, they end up formulating this massive, I'm talking massive ball of squid beaked, nasty, tar like ball in their bellies that end up passing through their digestive system and they end up pooping it out. So this ball then floats to the surface, historically was found floating on the ocean and was used to help us create perfume. So how gross is that, that we took whale poop and then turned it into perfume. But it was because it had this special type of musk as well as it had this way of holding aromas, holding scent to it so that your perfume would last longer. But ultimately it's just squid beak poop from a sperm whale. Isn't that amazing? But don't worry, amber grease can now be made synthetically. There's no reason for anyone to be killing a whale for this type of special poo. And so for that reason, uh, luckily the whales are no longer at threat uh, for this very expensive and very sought after poop. So there you have it. The five grossomest animals I can think of right now. I think I should turn this into a series. Just keep telling you about all the grossome facts that I know about. Cause honestly, I think it's really fun. I hope you like it. Feel free to subscribe. Again, the reason why I'm doing this is because I feel like it's really important for kids to better understand the ocean and hopefully potentially become a marine biologist someday. So if that's you, don't lose hope on your dreams. Watch my other, other videos about how to become a marine biologist and feel free to write me if you have any questions. My email address is marinebiologymel at gmail.com or feel free to find me on Instagram at marinebiologymel. All right, we'll talk soon. Thanks everybody. Bye. That come out their, their bums in order to... <laughs>